Okay, we now get to a very cool theorem in the algebra that we are working on, and that is called the remainder theorem. Now, we actually encounter very few theorems at school, um, and this is a beautiful theorem that really illustrates the power of mathematics if we applied it to an abstract, uh, um, in an abstract setting. So, let me unpack this theorem for you. First, let me read it. When a polynomial Px is divided with uh, um, another polynomial dx, but dx is a first degree polynomial ax plus b, then the remainder is given by and this. Okay, so obviously this is like what? Okay, so let me explain. It's not that difficult. If I take my um, polynomial and I divide it with a divisor and my divisor look like this. There's something in front of the x plus a constant. In other words, something like 2x plus 1. Now look what happens when I take ax plus b and I make it equal to 0. Okay, Then I get ax is equal to minus b and then finally x is equal to minus b over a. Okay, So in this, in this case, if I make that equal to 0, I end with negative 1 over 2. Now this negative b over a, if I take that value, for example the negative a half, and I substitute it into the x of my polynomial and simplify, okay, so my polynomial might be something like x squared plus 3x minus 1, okay, so that's my polynomial. If I now substitute this one for example in there so take negative a half is equal to negative a half squared plus three times negative a half minus one okay and I simplify it what do I get here I get a quarter plus uh, or actually minus three over two and uh, let's make it minus six over four Okay, minus 1, that would be minus 4 over 4, so do that, minus 11, no, minus 9 over 4. Okay, this answer that I get is the remainder of when I take my polynomial and I divide it with my divisor if my divisor is 2x minus 1 in this case. That will be my remainder. Okay, So this is a very quick way of finding my remainder. I don't have to go through the long steps of um, long division and the one thing you just should know is this does not give me my quotient. Okay, It does not give the quotient, which is a little bit of a problem. If we need the quotient, we will have to do long division. There's no shorter method, okay? So we have to do long division to get the quotient. Let me do one more example for you just to illustrate. In the previous um, video, we saw that if we take the number or um, the polynomial, we did this with long division, 2x cubed plus 4 x squared plus 3. If we did this and we took our rem uh, divisor was equal to x minus 1 and then we found that our remainder was equal to 9. Let's see if that's true. First of all we make our divisor equal to 0. x is equal therefore to 1. Let's substitute 1 into our polynomial. See what we get. 2 times 1 cubed plus 4 4 times 1 squared plus 3. Okay, what do we get? 1 cubed and 1 squared is just 1. So I get 2 plus 4 plus 3. 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 3 is 9. There you see just a little bit more evidence that we can find the remainder by simply equaling our divisor to 0, solving our x, and then substituting that value into our polynomial. Okay, let's look at the proof. Why is this true? Why does that work? Okay, let's look at the proof. 
Okay, so what we want to prove, okay, is that my remainder can be given by taking my polynomial and substituting minus b over 2a, okay, if px is divided by, uh, not 2a, sorry, just a, if it's divided by ax plus b. So, how are we going to go about proving this? Well, let's first see if we can't find a formula for the remainder. Now, one thing that we do know is that if we use division transformation, so this is division transformation, uh, then Px is equal to my quotient times my divisor plus my remainder. Now from here, if I solve R, I have a formula for my remainder. My remainder would be equal to my polynomial minus the product of the quotient and the divisor. Okay, but now we know what the divisor is. That's just AX plus B. Okay, so we know that this is actually, in this case, we don't know what the polynomial is. The polynomial is not given yet. Okay. We don't know what the quotient is, but we do know that our divisor is AX plus B. Okay. Now, if AX plus B, okay, if AX plus B is equal to zero, okay, what is X? Well, if we solve for X, we find then X is equal to minus B over A. If we solve for x, that's what we get. So what's going to happen if I take my remainder and everywhere where there's an x, I replace minus b over 2a. Okay, so I take p and I sub substitute minus b over, not 2a, just a, okay, minus q. Instead of an x, I put minus b over a, okay. In my remainder, instead of an x, I put a and minus b over a plus b. Now look what happens when I solve all this. Okay, here comes the magic. Okay, minus, can't sim simplify this at all. This is simply just notation saying that in my formula q and in my formula p I must substitute b over 2, but I don't have those formulas. But here I notice, uh-huh, What's going to happen over here? Well, if I simplify this, the a's cancel. So I get minus b plus b, and that's just equal to zero. So this whole bracket ends up being zero. And that is why I get my final answer, zero. It doesn't matter what the quotient is. The divisor is zero, and if I multiply zero with that quotient, I'll get zero. So I end up just having P is P of negative B over A. And that means, and that's my final conclusion, that my remainder, if I make my, my divisor equal to zero and I solve it, and I substitute va that value into P, I will get the remainder by doing so. Cool. Well, go and practice this and see how absolutely awesome this is to quickly find the remainder useless to find the uh, quotient, but very good to find the remainder. Okay, enjoy.